I'm Sid Dobrin with Inventive Fishing, and, and I've been thinking, well, I've been thinking about menhaden. You know, pogies, bunkers, the super bait fish. And why am I thinking about menhaden? Because a few weeks ago, the Atlantic State's Marine Fisheries Commission, Atlantic Menhaden Management Board, approved the 2015 and 2016 allowable catch quotas. And unlike years past, this year's decision sends a rather important message. You see, while most of us think about menhaden as the perfect bait for stripers, bluefish, cod, and a whole bunch of other game fish, menhaden are also fished for more than any other species of fish on the East Coast. And the menhaden fishery has been at the center of fisheries management thinking, commercial fishing approaches, and ecological thinking since at least the mid-1880s. So last year, the Menhaden harvesting industry requested that their quotas be increased to allow them to take about 30% more Menhaden than they had in the past. Let's get a little context on this. Menhaden are not a food fish for humans, never have been, yet their oily, stinky, bony, beautiful little bodies make great food for game fish and food fish as well for crabs. They also make great fertilizer. In fact, if you recall your American history and the lore about the Indians teaching the pilgrims to put dead fish in the earth with their corn seeds to increase crop growth, well, those were menhaden. So we harvest menhaden for bait and for fertilizer. Menhaden are processed through a system known as reduction for fertilizer and other commercial uses. It was this sector of the menhaden industry that made the requests for increasing quotas. But we also need to consider that the reduction industry already harvests the majority of the menhaden. In fact, Paul Greenblatt, you know the guy who wrote that amazing book, Four Fish, about the disappearance of our four primary food fish, salmon, tuna, bass, and cod. Well, Greenblatt reported in the New York Times that Omega Protein, which is based in Houston, but has operations in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Virginia, has been harvesting menhaden since 1913 and takes 90% of the total national menhaden harvest. 90%! One company! Omega Protein, in fact, has put so much pressure on the Menhaden fisheries that in 2012 the ASMFC had to, impose the, had to impose a special limit on Omega's take limit. And research from the Pew Charitable Trust U.S. Ocean Conservation shows that industrial harvest has decreased overall Menhaden populations by 90% from their historical levels. So Omega wanted an increase to their industry's harvest limit by 30% this year. Now, fortunately, the ASMFC did not grant the full increase to the reduction industry, which we really should understand is the fact that the ASMFC did not grant Omega its increase, since they really are the primary player in the reduction industry. Now, part of what happened was that when the ASMFC announced that it would consider the reduction industry's request for increase, thousands of concerned anglers spoke up in protest, letting the ASMFC know just how dangerous the proposed increase was. The AMFC listened and granted the reduction industry a 10% increase over two years. But fortunately, this increase leads to an overall reduction in the take limit for the reduction industry from what their limits were prior to the 2012 imposed limits. Now, what makes all of this even more important is that in the ASMFC's announcement, they clearly explained that the board also committed to moving forward with the development of an amendment to establish ecological-based reference points that reflect Atlantic Menhaden's role as a forage species. So when I read this, I found myself immediately recalling H. Bruce Franklin's remarkable book, The Most Important Fish in the Sea, about the history of the Menhaden fishery. 
And let me just say, if you're a serious recreational angler who is seriously concerned about how our fisheries are managed, Franklin's book really ought to be on your must-read list. Not only is it incredibly smart and well-researched, it's flat-out eye-opening about how policy and cultural thinking about recreational fishing emerged in the United States. And given the current tussle over fisheries management issues and ecological thinking, I think that Franklin's Chapter 5, The Death of Fish and the Birth of Ecology, should be required reading for all recreational anglers. Yes, like Franklin, I'm an English professor, so I tend to think in terms of required reading. And yes, Franklin is just another perfect reminder of how important English professors have been to the world of recreational fishing. Ever heard of Norman MacLean? But what Franklin really teaches us is that our policies for menhaden harvest cannot be driven by industrial needs. Instead, we need scientific-based quotas that consider the ecological importance of the menhaden in global ecosystems. That is, menhaden have inherent ecological value that must be considered as more important than industrial success. The new ASMFC quotas reflect, to a degree, this kind of thinking, that it's starting to take ground with policymakers. Now, the long and the short of the ASMFC's new quota table is that as recreational anglers become a more cohesive voice, a more influential economic force, a more robust voting population, a more compelling, ecologically-minded body, a vocal assembly that demands science-driven policy not influenced by industrial demands, we stand to be better heard and better represented when management groups like the ASMFC render important policies like menhaden quotas and directly acknowledge which populations are influencing those policies. This new quota table is an important moment in the emerging voice of the recreational fishing community. Fish on. Can't.